In today's video, I'm gonna be going over how to land a software engineering internship and what are some of the things that I would do that is a must if I was trying to land an internship this year. Hey everyone, if you're new to my channel, my name is Kazim, aka Zim the Dream, and I'm a software engineer at a top tech company. If you guys wanna know how to actually land a software engineering internship, keep on watching this video. And if you guys want any more advice on how you can land your next CS internship or job, or insight into my real life as a software engineer, be sure to subscribe down below and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any new videos that I have to post. So if you've come to this video, you're most likely a CS student and you're thinking about your future and your career, and I think it's very important that you're being fed the proper information so you can be pointed in the right direction. I actually have a video up on my channel already talking about the most valuable things that every CS student needs to know to guarantee success after college. So you guys should definitely go check out that video after this one. But for now, let's get started on talking about how you can actually get a software engineering internship this year. Before we even jump into building your resume, doing projects, blah, 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 those are important, but before we jump into that, we need to talk about the internship offer timeline. Typically, most students wanna get a summer internship because obviously they're not in school and that's when they have the most time. And if that is the case, then you usually only have three opportunities to get an internship during your college career. That's freshman year summer, sophomore year summer, and junior year summer. Getting an internship your senior year summer is unlikely because that's when you graduate and at that point, you're just applying to full-time jobs. And also, when you're applying to summer internships, most companies require that you have at least one more following gear after that summer. We know we have three opportunities to get a software engineering internship. Now we need to know when are these offers given out and how can we be the first to grab one? Well, for summer software engineering internships, most companies generally give their internship offers during fall recruiting cycles. Fall recruiting cycles generally start around September or October, and this is to accept applications, conduct interviews, and just generally get the internship process started. So let's say we want an internship for the summer of 2025, then that means for the fall of 2024, we are targeting applications and heavily applying to internships. Let's say you're in spring semester of your junior year. Oftentimes that's too late to get an internship for your junior year summer. And like I mentioned before, your senior year summer, you can't get an internship. So you're pretty much all out of chances. So understanding the internship timeline is super important so that you're heavily applying and you're not missing your opportunity to get that software engineering internship. All right. So the next thing that I want to talk about is applying yourself and enhancing your resume. So firstly, you want to make sure that your resume is up to date and you're using a good resume format and template. There are several free online resume templates that you can use. I'll put a couple on the screen. I also put the exact resume template that helps me get tons of interviews at top tech companies. I put that on my website as a free resource and this helps me get interviews at Google, Facebook, Amazon to name a few, which ultimately helps me get an internship, which is really what you need. You need to be able to put your foot through the door and the first step to doing that is enhancing your resume and if you don't have any experience don't worry oftentimes that people prepare for application season is in the summer and this is where personal projects come in not only to put stuff on your resume but to actually gain experience and learn more these are three things that you can add to your resume to enhance it even if you have minimal to no experience the first one is mandatory class projects these are perfect if you have no experience because you're already going to do these projects in class anyway so all you have to do is clean them up and add them to your resume the next one is to find a certified course on course Coursera or Udemy. They have plenty of low effort courses that you can take and you can just find one that interests you and add this to your resume. The next one is extracurricular activities like hackathons or STEM related club events. This is perfect because you're already a part of these things so you can add these initiatives to your resume to boost it and enhance it. And I think a lot of CS students struggle with what are some beginner friendly projects that I can add on my resume when I don't have any experience. I can definitely make a video on that. If you guys want to see that, leave me a comment and subscribe down below. And also don't be afraid to to add experience on your resume that is not coming from a technical background, just be mindful to limit it. I remember when I was applying to internships and I had minimal experience, one thing that I put on my resume was that I worked in Jamba Juice. And this was because that I knew as a software engineer, most of the time you work in a team. So I tailored my Jamba Juice description to say just that, like I worked effectively in a team. I work well with people. You can do this, but just make sure you limit it as technical background is preferred. So the next thing that I want to talk about is trying to get a referral. So it's no secret that applying 
applying to jobs in the tech industry right now is super hectic and very competitive. So we wanna do anything that we can to get the advantage. If you have the opportunity to get a referral, this is probably one of the best ways to either one, bypass the waiting and directly get an interview, or two, directly get an internship. A great resource to connect with people and possibly get a referral to a company is through the LinkedIn platform. You don't wanna be that annoying person that is just like, hey, can I get a referral? So these are three steps that you can take when reaching out to people on LinkedIn or just in general. The first one is to introduce yourself and tell them why their profile interested you. That could go like, hey, my name is Kazim. I'm also studying computer science at UC Irvine and I really like that you did so-and-so project. Step two is to ask them if they're willing to share more about their experience. This could be positive things that they had from their experience or also challenges. And lastly, when we do ask for a referral, even if they say no or don't have the ability to give us one, at least we've gained so much insight about their experience and this can be used to benefit us. When I was heavily applying to internships, I was on LinkedIn and I thought this was a great professional app that I used to connect with people. And it was honestly just super easy to see who all went to my university that was studying computer science or in tech and had a tech job and connect with them. I did get a referral from one of my friends who was an upperclassman and they referred me to Facebook, which I guess is known as Meta now. And that somewhat felt like what was my golden ticket. Like they gave me the referral and I immediately got an interview email. I was like, yo, we're in this thing. I had a few rounds of interviews at Meta and I made it to the final round and I ended up not getting the internship, but that all would have never happened if I did not reach out and get that referral. Obviously it's preferred if you do have a personal connection with somebody, but sometimes you can just reach out and if the referral doesn't work, you can still get some insight and learn about that person and what they did at the company that you wanna apply to and just gain some sort of knowledge um, that is gonna be beneficial and useful for you. So get that referral, especially in this economy, that is one of the best things that you can do. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is actively applying to companies directly and tracking your progress daily. So obviously, if you wanna get a software engineering internship, you have to apply, but I really do believe that it is sometimes a numbers game and applying to as many internships as possible to give you the best chance at getting that internship offer. One thing that I'll advise is unless you're using a trusted third-party platform, I would directly apply to the company. And what I mean by this is that you directly go onto whatever company's site that you're applying for and apply directly instead of using that third-party platform to apply to multiple different internships at once. You don't want your application to get lost in the sauce, so I would recommend directly applying to the website and making sure that I handed this in to the company that I wanna apply for and then they can email me back if you know we wanna move forward, but I'm not gonna trust the third-party platform to distribute it. And also do not stop applying until you have that internship offer in hand or multiple internship offers in hand. You may get those first initial interviews and you're like, okay, perfect. Like I have these interviews lined up. I can just focus on these and study for these. Still, you need to be actively still searching and looking and applying because internships are opening all throughout the fall recruiting cycle. And speaking from personal experience, you may not do so well on an interview, but okay, at least you applied some more internships and you're hearing back. And it's like a constant cycle until you land that internship offer. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna discuss is setting up systems in place to practice technical interview questions. When you do finally get that interview scheduled and they're testing you on technical problems, you wanna make sure that you're prepared. There's several online resources to study and practice technical problems. LeetCode is probably the number one platform. There's also HackerRank, which is another good platform, and just general online technical problems that you can research. The system that I had in place that worked for me was at least by minimum solving one technical problem a day and I feel like most of the time it was like two or three but at least having minimum of one a day like said okay I'm going to study this and I'm gonna hold myself accountable so that I'm learning something new every single day and you want to make sure that when you're setting up these systems you're targeting the actual CS concepts that they're gonna be testing you on which is of course data structures and algorithms you just want to be strategic in how you target these data structures and algorithms maybe you want to focus on hash maps or linked lists or five cues algorithms maybe you want to focus on binary search or quick sort it really just depends on what is your areas of weakness what is your areas of strength but you want to make sure that you have systems in place so that you're targeting these things as you're studying and as you're solving these technical problems if you guys want me to go into detail and the different cs concepts that they are targeting during these technical interviews feel free to leave a comment down below something really important that i also want to discuss is to conduct 
real life interviews. I can't stress this one enough. I think it's super important to simulate a real life interview environment where you have an interviewer in front of you and you're solving the technical problem. This is just going to benefit you when it comes down to actually doing the real thing. And essentially it's just gonna let you not fumble the bag. Speaking from personal experience, I remember when I was studying and I was doing tons of lead code problems and I felt very confident when it came time to the actual interview, I had nerves, I had difficulty verbalizing every thought that I was doing as I was solving a problem because I was so used to just solving lead code problems and not talking out loud. This is why I say have that real life interview experience because when you simulate that environment, you're talking out loud, you're solving problems, you, you get familiar with that so that when it's time to do the real thing, you just feel so comfortable because you've done it already. And it's also important that when you're doing those mock interviews, you're also timing yourself. So you're giving yourself that added layer of pressure and it just honestly prepares you for the real thing. So that's it. That's how you can actually land a software engineering internship this year. If you enjoyed this video or thought it was helpful in any way, be sure to give me a thumbs up down below. If you guys have any questions on anything that I discuss or you have any questions for me, feel free to leave a comment down below. You guys can expect more CS advice and helpful tips. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel and I will see you in my next one. Peace. Cause I can't get much stronger Man, I've been waiting all night now That's how long I've been on ya